Okay. All right. Hey, Angie. Welcome to the pod. Thank you for taking the time to have a chat so we can get to know you a little bit more. How are you? Are you on a holiday or already on training mode? Hey, um, thanks for having me here. I always love having a chat, especially about football. Uh, I, I don't know, it's hard as a footballer to say that you're ever on holidays. Uh, I had some training this morning and uh, basically, yeah, post-World Cup, it's kind of just been a bit of a bit of a roller coaster coming down out of a two-month camp. So it's it's hard not to be doing training of some kind. Right, right. So um, like any other episode uh, in the Filipina series, uh, could you talk about how the love affair with football started and did you play any other sports growing up? Sure, yeah. When I was growing up uh, in primary school or even before we entered school, I would just either be outside playing or have a ball of some kind and be playing here um, in Australia. So I think the first sport that I started playing was touch football. So that's a variation of rugby league um, for kids. So they're not actually hitting each other. Um, so that was my first sport. And then I played cricket. I played, oh gosh, basically everything. And I didn't actually start playing football until high school. So I had a best friend in primary school who we were going to different high schools. And the one thing that we could kind of do to keep in touch with each other was play at the same football club. So we signed up there. I ended up being kind of good at it. So I stuck with it. And then as I went through my high school, it's a it's a sporting school. So Marsden State High School has rugby league, volleyball, uh, touch football, soccer. So they gave me a sports scholarship to play there at high school. Um, and then I just kind of went from there. Um, and in terms of my ambitions, I always wanted to do something with sport. So looking forward to the future, the only thing that could really get me to a World Cup and to an Olympics was soccer. Um, and it was probably my strongest sport that I had going for me. Uh, I did play basketball for a little bit there, but I kind of peaked at Five three, five four. So I had to call it quits on the basketball career. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just went went fully committed into soccer from there. So how? When did you realize though that hey, this is something I you know I'd want to do professionally in the future? Okay, so when I was about fourteen, fifteen, my club that I was with were uh, were involved in the state trials so I went to the Queensland state trials for their under 15s team and at the time I didn't really know how serious it was going to get I just thought you know I could play more football I could meet more people kind of travel around a little bit so it was it was kind of just like I, I it wasn't even meaning to do it and it's right. not that I fell in by accident but I just made the state team went to the state tournament made the Australian team and then once I was in the under 17s national team that's when I kind of moved into training with the professional team with Brisbane Raw and it just kind of snowballed from there so I stayed with the under 17s Australian team got picked up by the under 20s Australian national team and by then I was with Brisbane Raw for I think three years four years and then yeah just went went from there really so it was kind of like yeah I, I I always knew that I wanted to play sports and even in primary school I said that my goal in life was to make an Olympics um, and that was at like 10 years old so I think it was always in the back of my mind wanting to do something like this with sports. But growing up, it was kind of just like, I want to keep playing more football. I want to keep making more friends. Like it was more so just that. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. Okay. And you're just what, 25, right? Yeah, 25. Oh. I'm 20 in uh, a couple of days, actually. So. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So Angie, confession time for me. Um. I I I knew you during your time in in victory because I was following the team, um initially really because of Natasha Dowie and yeah. <laughs> Emily Gildick was there at some point and Kyra Quinn across, um of course uh, you were the uh championship uh winning captain um, back in twenty one was it yeah twenty one right yeah it feels like a long t- feels like a long time ago um uh <laughs> anyway. It was really um your goal versus Canberra that you know really got my attention because I really admire defenders who who can attack. So I really just wanted to say that first because again it feels like a long time ago and I was um super surprised to find out that you're you're Filipino, which I really only found out during the um camp in California. So 
you can you can just imagine my joy uh you were on my um wish list for you know to be on a world cup roster for a while anyway um <laughs> i wanted to say that but <laughs> you were uh left back in victory uh attacking fullback in in western and i know at some point you were um more of an attacking player uh under um was it Calder right yeah Calder and, Calder United yeah Calder United and then left back in Denmark so you're mostly playing like left back left wing back your whole life is that a position that you really like or if given a chance would you like to play a different role um I think with Calder United I played up front just to give me a bit more freedom a bit more confidence uh run at players and I think in a league where I could really go forward and really hone in on that part of my game, I think that really trans transversed across to the professional league where I could obviously be more challenged in a defensive point of view, but then use that attacking kind of prowess and, and experience that I got with the MPL. Um, I think the strongest position for me, it, it's, it's hard to say considering I just played centre-back at the World Cup for most part of it, but I think I like being a left back. I like whipping balls in. I like attacking. I like running up and down the line. Uh, that's probably, yeah, my favourite. Um, and then I think the first time I played centre back was in Iceland um, a couple of years back. And then I played centre back in the Champions League when I was in Denmark with Fortuna Jorin. So it's it was more so just becoming more versatile. I think it's always good to have more weapons in your arsenal than just being locked into one thing. Um, so yeah, probably left back, but any anywhere along that whole back line or left side, I'm happy to play. Gotcha. So after your um stint in the dub, um Iceland in the middle of COVID, two years in Denmark, and then as you've mentioned, Champions League. Now you're back in the A League. Do you want to maybe break into the WSL or in WSL, or you're happy here in in A League at the moment? Yeah, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I, before the World Cup, I was having conversations with a club in the WSL and I actually had a move on the cards. Uh, unfortunately, it couldn't pan out the way that we'd like to just because of some logistical reasons. But yeah, it's definitely, that would be the dream move for me is going over to England. But being in any of those top leagues in Europe and competing in a Champions League, that's definitely high up there for my priorities with my career. Right. Okay, now you've previously mentioned that um, uh, Stage was a big influence in your decision to switch allegiances to the Philippines from Australia. Could you talk more about why you made that decision to switch and when did you realize that it was a possibility? I actually didn't really have any idea that it was possible. Um, having my caps with Australia, I thought that kind of locked me in and that's my, my understanding of it at the time. Um, when Asian Cup came around and Stadge kind of fully committed to the team and the journey and what he wanted to get out of the Philippines national team, um, getting them to the World Cup, that's when our conversation started to happen. Um, if if I had known previously that it was an option, it might have been on my radar a little bit earlier. But yeah, I, I generally didn't know until those conversations with Stadge um, and why I switched. It's it's easier to move around in club land because it's not really that much of a commitment. And in terms of national teams, it's, it's a pretty major step for me and it's a big decision. Um, growing up in Australia, playing soccer in Australia, it's obviously a big part of my growth as a person. And I really appreciate and acknowledge that side of me, but it definitely, it doesn't counteract the fact that I'm still, you know, my mother's daughter, I'm still Filipino. I still grew up around, a lot of Filipinos we'd go to parties on the weekend down the Gold Coast and if they were Filipino they were family so everyone's auntie everyone's uncle <laughs> sorry everyone's auntie everyone's uncle um so that's still a big part of me as well um and having a coach who believed in me valued me respected me um that was a big thing for a player coming into California and meeting all the girls I I've said it a number of times now during the World Cup and after the World Cup I feel so connected to this team. I feel so connected to the girls, to the country, the support that we had from everyone who came to New Zealand and everyone at home who was watching. Uh, I'd never felt that before. Um, it's 
such a big thing for me in the team where I feel like I, I really belong and I can really be myself. And I think that's like one of the biggest things apart from how you're performing on the field is how you're gelling off the field that really makes a team competitive and also feel like home basically. So I, th- I think that was, that was a big thing for me. Right. And what did your mom say? And did you have a, like a talk, did you talk to her about it before you made the decision or what was that like? Yeah, we, we definitely had a chat after, after we kind of realized that this was an option. Um, she basically just said, okay, well, what do you need me to do? Let's, let's lock it in, you know, let's, let's stop having conversations and let's, let's get some action going. So both her and my dad were both, they were both fully supportive and, and extremely happy to support my, my change and my switch. And I think to this day, they're just wanting me to be successful, wanting me to be happy. And I'm both of those things I feel, especially after this World Cup. So they're, they're happy. Great. All right. Now, so with Alan's departure, and everything kind of um, hanging in the balance, so to speak. Will you still be playing for the Philippines no matter who the coach is when you're called out? Yeah, I said it in an interview at the World Cup. I'm here for the long run. So it's I'm not just dipping in, dipping out. Um, I, I like Stadge as a coach. I think his, his mark is going to be long-lasting. He has good standards. He has good professionalism. The lessons that the girls have learned under his guidance are big ones and I think the standards that he's placed the girls all respect it all want to keep it going and we don't see the world cup I'm, I'm now speaking collectively for everyone but we don't see the world cup as the end goal and that's you know we're, we're done it's now the beginning of moving towards the next world cup or the olympics or asian asian games or aff like it's just a, a snowball effect now we take what we've learned with Stadge and with his coaching staff and we place it into the team as team standards for the future. You've touched on your um, experience um, uh, joining the camp for the first time. Was, was there any particular player who made you really feel um, welcome from the get-go or someone that you've really gotten close to during the camps? The first camp in LA, I was roommates with Meryl. So we, we really hit it off. Me and Meryl get along great. Um, she's an absolute laugh and she's always easy to hang out with and talk to. So that was probably my first kind of connection in camp, just having that roommate. And I mean, they were all very welcoming. They were all very friendly, but having said that Jackie and I were about to go into Western United together. So I think that was also a connection, um, uh, like that stands out to me as well. Um, and throughout the world cup, it's, it's hard to point out just specific people because I feel like everyone's gotten so close. You know, we see each other every day for two months and we're going through this roller coaster journey of a World Cup. Um, not many people get to do this and just having a group of people that you can share this experience with and share your feelings with is super important. Um, so off the field, I feel like everyone everyone's pretty close. Um, I get along with most people and I think on the field, the closest people I would say is probably considering Haley and I are center back partners I think we're definitely the closest relationship for me on the field considering how much I'm leaning on her as a center back and then her as a leader as well um Sarah having her on set pieces and just having a chat with her and knowing that she's always got my back and I've always got her back that's probably a big one as well and then live in goals um it doesn't matter where I am on the field if she makes a killer save I'm sprinting towards her to slap her on the back and give her a high five and say well done um yeah, they're probably the three on the field that I'm closest with. But off the field, just honestly, everyone, everyone's so, everyone's so cool, everyone's so friendly. It's it's hard to pinpoint people. Gotcha. So you've you've mentioned um Haley. Uh, she's the most capped player in the national team. Arguably the most passionate. We've all seen the photos. Um, could you <laughs> talk to us about your partnership with Haley at the back? Did you have like specific conversations about the country? Or was there anything that, you know, she mentioned to you um, of how important the, 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 the journey is for her? Before we had our first game in our Sydney camp, um, no, no, I don't think it was in Sydney. It was actually at the World Cup. Haley and T kind of had a group conversation about how important this was and how far they've come along in their journey, just being the two probably most senior players in our squad. And then also Ina, 
coming through. I think the examples that they show for the team, the passion that they show for the team, for the flag, for the country is second to none. So having those three girls, but I think a lot of the girls who've come throughout this whole 18 month journey really understand the importance of the team and the country, but having, yeah, Hayley, T, Ina, girls like that expressing how much of themselves they've put into this team and how much of themselves they've they've put into representing the country of the Philippines. And I think with Haley and I, it was a good friendship off, on the field and an even better friendship off the field. So any conversations that we had, I knew that I could always just go to her for anything really. Um, I think she's an incredible leader. And in terms of putting herself out there on the field and off the field, for the team and for the country, she's definitely up there with one of the best examples I've had as a leader. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm going to be a bit more uh, personal here. Last year, I had uh, Captain T uh, on the pod, and she talked about her um, long journey of acceptance and, and living her truth and how it's an up and down, you know, journey of being able to, to express herself in a way that she feels more um authentic in in the player spot a few months ago um you also kind of touched on being in the same journey of finding your truth and this um fear around uh acceptance how's that journey been like for you and you know not having to i guess pretend or hide a big part of yourself now my journey probably isn't as bad as some people's it can definitely take a turn for a lot of people where it's not a a a safe or comfortable environment to come out and and be living your your truth and being the person that you are inside uh for me growing up in high school I kind of kept it on the down low um kind of kept it away from a lot of people just just to feel comfortable and feel accepted um once I got out of high school and kind of into the real world per se that was the turning point for me where I could really express myself and be myself and and love who I wanted to love and be living without having to lie to people or hide who I am to people um that's super important I think having that having that kind of come out and and show yeah who I actually am and who's my who's my good friends and who's my my people who support me as well. So it, it kind of was a, a double-edged sword where I could see, you know, who really supported me throughout this times and who kind of shied away from supporting me and wanting me to to be happy. Gosh, I think, thanks for sharing that. I, I appreciate it because all these stuff, especially with, with the actually, and then um, I listened to yours a few months ago, it, it resonated um with me and honestly you know sometimes it just kind of um escalates in your mind um and it truly is not linear so thank you for sharing that so in in a country like <clears throat> excuse me in in a country like the philippines um where being um a part of the community is is tolerated but not you know like truly accepted what would you say to a person or maybe a football player struggling with um self acceptance yeah, it's it's a hard one. Um, I would just say that the easiest part of that journey would be finding people who really care about you and really understand you and leaning on them as much as you can. Um, personally, I find it difficult to be vulnerable and, and reach out to help, uh, reach out to people for help. So I think if you can kind of take a step back and realise that you're not a burden, you're actually just a person trying to find out who they are and and how they're how they're going to really live and be happy I think yeah just finding people who will support you in that journey and leaning on them I think that's probably the easiest step that you can take um in that kind of journey gotcha thank you and I'm emotional so I'm just like having (laughs) that's fine Um... (laughs) That's okay. I'm 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 not sure if you've seen like that episode with T. Like she goes into this whole conversation about her journey for like maybe a good 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> that was... yeah. Um 
Anyway, so let's go to uh, social media questions. I know that there are a lot of questions. Um, so I'm just, I'll just integrate it with all the questions that I have in mind that were also asked by the fans. So let's just go through them and I kind of um, combine some for you. So, okay. all right. Okay. It's like two pages. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, from La- Lancely Her- Herodura wants to know, what was it like to go through recovery after the injury? Anything that helped you along the way? And she says she's going through rehab after injury and would love to he- hear any inspiration and says you were amazing at the World Cup. Oh, well, th- thank you. And thank you for your question. Um, luckily, I haven't had as many serious injuries as a player can have, t- touch wood. Um, this was my second time in a moon boot and it was my first time breaking Oh no, I've broken this wrist as well, actually, but it was the first time where I've had an injury that's prevented me from playing soccer for that much time, especially before a world cup. So for me, it was, it was honestly, it was a couple of pretty dark months. I had broken my foot right before the world cup. I missed the grand final of our A-League games, um, our A-League season. Um, I was going through some personal stuff. So it was just a bit of a mix of, of hard situations that I had to kind of deal with um, in terms of, of kind of getting into getting back into things and pushing myself to get back for a World Cup. Um, there's always something you can do. So if you hurt, you know, any kind of any kind of, of limb, your foot, your quad, your hamstring, anything like that, you can always work something else out. You can always do upper body. You can go for a swim. You can go on the bike and just cycle over. You can do core. There's always a little 1% action that you can still do. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't run. I couldn't squat. I couldn't do anything looking similar to a footballing action. Um, So most of my rehab was basically I just wake up, do some upper body, do some light lower body on my opposite foot and maybe go for a swim or do some boxing or something like that. So I think as long as you feel like you're still doing something, you're still improving a little thing. Um, I think, yeah, that's probably a big thing. Um, but also don't shy away from the feelings that you're having. Everyone, everyone who's played professional sport has gone through something serious or whether it's injury, whether it's personal life, there's always something that's going to happen um, to us as people that affect us in the sporting capacity. So don't shy away from your feelings. You don't have to bottle it in. You can always find someone to confide in. You can journal. You can meditate. You can do anything like that um, to kind of release that stress and maybe even anxiety about your injury. So I think, yeah, just keep keep pushing, keep, you know, moving, and then also just reflecting on what's happening at the same time. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Next question is from um, Stuart Harrison. You already touched on this that you it's a dream to to play in England um but he's asking if so do you have a preference which team and he says Aston Villa are the best we we did have the pleasure of meeting Aston Villa player in camp um yeah Maz it came and supported us and uh that was my first time meeting her and, and she's a pretty cool girl so I think she had nothing but nice things to say about Aston Villa um that wasn't the team that I was having um, negotiations with, but yeah, it's it's definitely a dream, and it's definitely something that I want to be doing relatively soon. I, I don't want to I don't want to promise anything, but I'm definitely pushing towards something like that. All right. Um, I was hoping you'd say Liverpool, but okay. <laughs> I, well, Liverpool's cool. <laughs> All right. So, um, from Blade. And then I see at Twitter, um, we kind of know how women's soccer works in the U.S. For the Aussie soccer system, what does a career progression look like from talent identification up to professional career of a Matilda? Yeah, I'm not super familiar with the U.S. system. I know that there's the college system, the draft system. It's a bit complicated for me. Honestly, yeah, but... yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's a bit. Um, in Australia, it's for 
for A League careers now, it's different to what it was in the past. I think um, in terms of the pathways, you can play NPL, do great, and get picked up by teams. You can go overseas, play in a a, a second div maybe in mainland Europe and get that experience, come back over here. You can try out for state league teams, get noticed in that way. Um, for me, yeah, I kind of touched on it before, but I made the state team, played MPL, and then made the national team and, and went from there. Um, and then I think it's difficult to say because there's a lot of different career paths for each and every Matilda, um, for example. Uh, I know Courtney Vine, she was in under 17s. I think she was in under 20s, but then she didn't get called up for about six, seven years after moving on from that program. And now she's playing in World Cup, scoring the the penalty that wins them the whole quarterfinal to push them into semifinals. So it's it's difficult to have that definity about how to make it into the national team. But I think NPL is a good pathway. Making a state team is a good pathway. Um, making A leagues and then really killing it in A leagues is a is a good pathway as well. It used okay. to be you had to go kind of thing to play yes. full time experience and then move. That's kind of what happened. I was kind of in that um, movement as well, where I was playing the A league and then a lot of the national team girls moved over to England, um, and then I kind of made that move to England as well before I started to get caught up again. Um, but now it's it's different. Like Courtney Vines in the A league and she's yeah. played there for six years so it's it's difficult to have just a one set answer but yeah they're probably the most common pathways gotcha and the second question is have you ever tried adobo with vegemite if not do you think that fusion would work surprisingly or unsurprisingly definitely not <laughs> i'm not i like adobo we had it in camp all the time um and I cannot imagine that it would taste good with Vegemite. <laughs> I personally am pretty indifferent to Vegemite. It's not my, okay. my right? So putting it on adobo, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, next question from Paula, Paula Bernasor. Uh, she's asking, what's your favorite Cebuano word, if you know any? Uh, one that we would always do in our kind of team huddles before games or if we're in the change rooms um, trying to get hyped up for a game or talk about how important it is, the girls would all just say, mention the importance of Puso and heart and, and playing for the flag. Um, that was probably my my favourite one. Um, but I also like Mabuhai. And Mabuhai is like a good one. Like we, I, I'd knock it out in camp all the time talking to girls. Um, actually, funny story. Um, I don't know. I don't know why and how this happened, but in the change room, we were we always play songs and we're always singing along and we had this particular song that came on that I sang um and somehow I don't know why I have a good I have a good country cowboy accent <laughs> so when I sang this song I sang it in that accent and all the girls were like who who's singing and why are they singing like that um and I don't know if you see it on the Instagrams in the in the Instagram comments now, but all the girls will comment like Mabu Ha Howdy to me. Yeah. As like oh, <laughs> yeah. all, you know. always say this to me. Um just as like a greeting or like good job and or something like that. So that's like an inside joke now that we have is is apparently I'm a cowboy. But yeah, <laughs> Mabu Ha is probably one of my favorites actually now that you mention it. <laughs> okay. Um Rian wants to know who is your favorite football player? My favorite football player. Oh, this is uh, this is a hard one. Um, I like from Barcelona and Spain. I like Mappy Leon. I think she's she's really good. Um, I like from the Matildas, Steph Catley. I think as a left back, I grew up idolizing her. She was at Victory, and then she went to now she's at a massive club like Arsenal, and and she's captain the Matildas at this World Cup. She's definitely one of my one of my inspirations when I was growing up when I was a bit younger um and when we versed Sweden and we played against them I like Fridolina uh Rolfo from Barca she's I don't know <laughs> I'm a bit biased I'm saying all these left-sided players but they're probably yeah my couple of my favorites it, it makes sense it makes sense it's <laughs> a position you play so 
That's good. Um, from Justino Demira in Truso, how do you deal with taller strikers? Yeah, um, playing in Europe, playing in Champions League, and now playing in the World Cup, I had to come across a lot of tall strikers. Um, Sinigorcevic was probably the tallest player I've played against so far. Um, it's it's not a misconception in soccer that size doesn't matter, but I know it it's a it's definitely a big part of football, especially as a defender. Um, there's a lot of things you can do before it comes to just a, a battle with the height. You can use your body before they even leave the ground. If you're having a, a kind of vertical aerial battle with them, um, you can use your body in a way that they can't, considering you have a lower centre of gravity. So you have an easier time turning and twisting, direct, uh, changing directions. Um, but I actually have a pretty good vertical jump. So if, if you can work on one thing, work on explosivity, work on your jumping ability and work on... Um, yeah, kind of competing aerially because my vertical jump's actually not bad. I play I played against Hannah Wilkinson with um uh, in that New Zealand game and there was a couple times where I had to uh, jump and battle with her and I feel like I feel like I won it a couple times. So it, it's not <laughs> possible to to figure out those situations. Yeah, I got gotcha. That that makes sense. Um I had this question for for Katrina Gio as well. And she talked a lot about um working on explosiveness. Um you know she she plays in in Sweden so for sure she yeah. has a lot of um uh taller defenders in her case all right so some World Cup questions here um ma underscore rj wants to know what were uh, the things going through your head during the crucial moments of that New Zealand game for for example the set piece that led to the golden goal the save and finally when the final whistle was blown. Um, on the goal, I think Q did well originally to win that set piece for us. And we talked before we even entered the tournament that set pieces were going to be massive for us. Um, in our Sweden game, when we scored our goal, it was off a set piece. So it just showed that it is possible to score in those type of, um, areas of play, uh, with our set pieces with me and Sarah on the ball. Um, I think we both trust each other enough to, kind of have a conversation about what's going to be the best delivery, the angle, the runs, who we're trying to aim for, stuff like that. Um, we both agreed that it would be better for me to kind of swing it in with my left foot um, and Sarah to just run over as a decoy, but then, yeah, join the attack. So I think, yeah, just I just take a breath before every big free kick. I just kind of zone in uh, as much as I can, um, whipped it in, Sarah was there in the in the right position that we kind of um, anticipated her to end up in. I think she did great getting away from her defender and, and just whipping that ball in. Serena, I, I, I rate Serena every single day. I think she's a fantastic player, fantastic striker, but there's three defenders in the box and there's Serena. Like, I, In what world does your striker win that ball and make it a goal, especially the first goal in your World Cup? Um, yeah, I think she did incredible and, and her running to the bench to celebrate. Um, I feel like you always feel kind of tired in games, but as soon as it's, it's a moment like that, it, it doesn't matter. You're sprinting. You're sprinting to celebrate. So it was kind of just like a out-of-world experience where you weren't tired anymore. You were just excited. So, yeah, sprinting sprinting to celebrate with the whole team um, was a really good, really good moment for us. Um, and I think, I don't know if, we're, if we've been forgetting about it or if the media is forgetting about it, but when Liv made that incredible save, fingertip save at the end of the game. Um, that was a massive moment. Me and Haley, I think you can see it in the replay. She she saves the goal, goes out for a corner. Me and Haley sprint towards her. I'm not sure what we yell, but we're yelling something like this close to her face, yelling something, giving her slaps um, on the back. Uh, that was a, if not equal or even more important moment to, to seal that win for us. Uh, that was massive. And then, yeah, final moments just elation, um, doing our laps around the field, seeing all the fans, doing our bows to the crowd each side. Um, yeah, it was it was unbelievable, honestly. I've had big wins in my career, um, big moments, but that was definitely definitely up there with probably one of the best moments. 
Gotcha. And Dan Abarico is asking if you can describe your emotions during the national anthem. Yeah, it's it's intense. It's seeing seeing your teammates, seeing the crowd. Um, it's you you kind of have to almost almost just calm yourself completely because you get if you get too worked up, too overwhelmed, too emotional like two minutes later you have to play a game against people who who are just trying to absolutely ruin your dreams by uh by winning games against you um but yeah there was there was definitely some some big feelings and um I think especially in that last game when we had so many people in the crowd against Norway and the stadium echoes so having everyone kind of singing with you and, and singing with such a collectiveness I think that was that was amazing and uh I think yeah just the the close-ups on Haley of her being so emotional I think that kind of sums it up is is it's uh, it's impossible to describe honestly right and um Meg Gaido is asking what's the most challenging part in playing for the Philippines and who is your favorite player in this world cup the most challenging part um for me personally, my the situation to get me into the team was way longer than what was at first originally anticipated. So the fact that I couldn't be with the girls, experience the entirety of the journey of them qualifying and then preparing um, with all these friendlies and all these matches and tournaments that they had, that was probably the most challenging thing for me is that I'm having to come into the team kind of, kind of as a late bloomer. So as much as I wanted to be with the girls and a part of their journey, I, I kind of only was there in person anyways for that very long pre-World Cup camp and then the World Cup. So having having to adjust to the, I wouldn't say I was a newbie because I feel like I've been doing this for a long time, but definitely to the team um, and just getting into the routine of it, getting into the, the habits of it, that was probably the most challenging part. My favourite player this World Cup uh, my favorite team, apart from us, obviously, um, my favorite team was probably Japan. So it, it hurts my heart to see them leave, leave the tournament. Um, they were probably my favorite. Uh, one specific player. Um, I like the Sweden keeper, Musevich. I think she's having a great tournament. It's actually been a keeper, a keeper's tournament yeah. for a lot, for a lot of this World Cup. Like a lot of these keepers are stepping up and really pushing pushing themselves forward as as big name players so she she's probably the one person there's a there's a lot of players that I enjoy watching but she's probably one of the ones I've, I've got my eye on gotcha and Grisha from Twitter wants to know and I like this question because I saw you wearing her jersey in the mix zone um and I really like Cairo as well so how was it playing against uh Cairo Graham Manson oh, here we go <laughs> <laughs> It's still a bit early for me, I think. Um, I uh, it it didn't look like it, but I enjoyed it. It's it's good to challenge challenge yourself against players like that. Arguably one of the best wingers in the world, playing at Barcelona and, and playing for Norway. Um, this deceivingly very sharp, very quick. Uh, you don't think you don't think she's gonna take one step and then and take you on, t- just take off down the line or, or cut inside, but she somehow does it. Amazing with her feet. Great striker of the ball, as as we saw, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it was it was incredible. If you want to be the best, you have to play against the best. So I, I really enjoyed challenge, challenging myself against players like that. Um, and yeah, it was, it was awesome to be able to swap jerseys with her as well. She's yeah, she's a fantastic player. Yes, he didn't do too bad. That was I was I was impressed that you could keep up with her. Yeah, it it was okay. <laughs> I feel difficult because. I know that they didn't have a good Euros and they yeah. weren't having the so it was probably the worst order that we could have gone is play a Norway angry looking yeah. for revenge needing a win um Graham Hansen had just been benched so she's out to prove something as well yeah. uh and they do you know they 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 show up in these big games and they put out these performances that are yeah full of venom full of venom. <laughs> right right that was that was not a not a ideal situation for us at all. Oh yeah, 
for sure, for sure. Um, it would have been, I don't know, just looking back, it would have been a maybe a different result had you played Norway first. Potentially, potentially. <laughs> you never know, Kim. Right. Okay. So N NXMCX TNXX wants to know how does a team unwind or bond together during your days off? Yeah. Um in pre-World Cup camp, we would work on a four day on, four day off cycle. So we'd train for four days, um, like one or two meetings a day, uh gym sessions, stuff like that. So there's not that much time in that um scenario but on off days we'll go get breakfast we'll go to the mall maybe watch a movie together something like that and in the world cup our snc coach luca would organize yoga for us um breath work um affirmations meditation stuff like that um so as a team we would do that collectively and that would really help kind of relax the body relax the mind um but me personally, I'd go get coffee. I would go shopping with Meryl. Um, I would get my nails done, so, as same as a lot of the girls. Um, we'd go to the fan zone, kind of just check out everything that's going on. Um, uh, we had a ping pong table in our kind of leisure room where we could go and hang out as a team with, and a PlayStation to play FIFA. So, you know, they, they organised a lot of things for us to kind of take our minds off off the World Cup and off football Um on our off days. Yep, gotcha. Okay, so this is kind of a, not kind of, it is a personal question um, from Marnell Placido and someone that I shouldn't mention the name. Um, okay. And a few more are asking, um, if you're single, dating, or already in a serious relationship. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, I'm a bit of a private person, so I'm not, I'm not going to comment uh too intensely on that um but yeah that I'm I'm a simple woman I just play football to hang out with my dog there's there's not much not too much going on um in my personal life okay gotcha but glad that's out of the way um <laughs> Fatima and Dini wants to know what would Angie be doing if she wasn't playing football Oof, uh Probably playing some other sport, <laughs> trying to play some other sport professionally, um, or I would just be working around sport. Uh, I can't see myself, any version of myself, not being involved in sport. Uh, it's my passion, it's my love, it's my purpose. So I'd probably be in sports, either playing something else. Uh, maybe I'll be a golfer. I'll be a professional golfer. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> not able to be high. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um. RV Rivera Bedo wants to know, and Marianne Ferrer also, they want to know what's your favorite Filipino food? Um, my favorite, my mom's chicken. My mom's chicken is incredible. She's yeah. She's gonna love me saying that, but that's probably my favorite, my absolute favorite. How does she cook it? Is it like a adobo style or something else? She can do whatever. Whatever you want. She can whip it up. She's incredible. She can mix it up. She can do adobo. She can just do fried chicken. She can do little, little special things on it. Like it's yeah. Shout out, shout out to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom, auntie, Tita. Okay, I'm from Yuzel, Sabrina, and Leafy. They're asking, do you have uh, plans to visit the Philippines anytime soon? In particular, put their ah sorry, particularly Cebu where your mother is from yeah um I've always wanted to growing up we didn't have that much money so we're not like lavishly traveling and and, and doing all these things um and now that I'm older and I kind of am in more of a position to do that and travel um I just never have the time I'm always in season or I'm in training um I would love to visit Cebu and all my family there with my mom and that's probably the most difficult part about it is getting us both with enough free time to go and travel um, for an extended period of time. So I would love to do that at some point in my life um, with my mom and kind of experience that with her and all of her family because she hasn't been back to the Philippines either since I think my grandmother passed, my Lola. Um, 
So that's a, a long time in between visits for her as well. I, vi I visited the Philippines a couple times um, in the past six months, um, just quick trips, which was nice. But I, I did want to come to the homecoming of the Philippines national team. And I, I had a lot of FOMO about missing out on that. But as we kind of touched on before, I had a move on the cards. So I wasn't, I wasn't even sure where I was going to be and, and where I needed to be. And I didn't want to be jumping from country to country with all my bags and stuff like that. So it's, it was hard to miss out on that experience with the girls, but it's, it's definitely on my, on my to-do list. Gotcha. Yeah. But a, a lot of the fans were looking for you. <laughs> yeah. I feel so, so bad and, and so much FOMO, but yeah, I was for, for a bit there, I was just living out of my suitcase because I had, I had no idea where I needed to be and, and if I needed to be at my club or, or be at my new club or, or yeah, it's, it's, it was a lot going on. Gotcha. And um, Luke Transporto, Marianne and Titia Tech from Twitter, um, they all want to know what's the best part or maybe your favorite part in playing for the Philippines? Um, I would say two, two of the, of the big ones would well one would be the girls i absolutely love the girls i've been a part of a lot of teams in my life but the friendships that we have the connections that we have um i already feel like i said before um so connected to this team and so passionate about this team um i love the girls i have so much love for the team so much love um for the environment that we have there and secondly i love that it's rekindling and, and kind of bringing to the surface more of my Filipino culture and my Filipino heritage and I love being able to um, fully embrace that and experience that in a way that maybe I hadn't um, done so much in the past I know growing up uh, I was very close with my mom and, and our relationship together was really strong and, and really intertwined so I, I did have that growing up but I think as an adult being able to fully understand what's going on and, and appreciate the culture and and yeah the the country as a whole and, and the people I think that's that's probably one of the best things as well thank you and finally from Ruby Hamon um, what advice would you give aspiring young football players who hope to one day reach the level of success that you have achieved in your career yeah, uh, I'll go cliche for a little bit. I'll say belief. You need to believe in yourself. Um, I'm 25. If you asked me 10 years ago when I was 15, um, Angie, you're going to go to the World Cup. One, I would have said, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm 15, whatever. Um, but having it now being a reality that I have gone to a World Cup 10 years later, um, just believe that it is going to happen. You never know the situations. You never know the scenarios you're going to be in. Um believe that you can get there it is possible we've just sent our first ever national team to a world cup and hopefully it's not the last one um hopefully it's the first of many so having that um reality and that perspective is a big thing and secondly i think doing more than what you think you need to be doing so when i was growing up even when i was with um our developmental squads and going into these uh, national team camps you would still be training you know four or five times a week you need to be doing or I, you don't need to I'm not a coach but I would advise that you do extra work you do some extra gym sessions do extra technical work do extra um, fitness you know you, you don't want to just show up and do the bare minimum or the standard if you want to go above and you want to do more things and better things you have to make sure that you're putting in the work as well so make sure you're showing up every day doing your best you're not going through the motions um you're really focusing and, and trying to improve every single day i'm not saying every single day has to be the best session of your life but you should be mentally checking in as well Gotcha. Thank you. All right. So that's all the questions from social media. Um, just time for the rapid fire section of the pod. So I <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to think. So just the first thing that comes to mind. Um, okay. Give an answer or choose an answer as quickly as you can. 
Okay? Uh, you ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. One thing you have to have with you when you travel. Um, my AirPods. Something you've always wanted to try but are afraid to do. Uh, skydiving. Back three or back four? Back uh, three, so I can play more forward. <laughs> <laughs> a perfectly timed slide tackle or intercepting a pass that's about to break the lines. Slide tackle. When beating pressure, would you rather dribble on your own or progress up the pitch with perfect touch passes for the teammate? <laughs> dribble. Scoring one yourself or assisting a goal? Scoring. I never score. I don't want to score. <laughs> Better movement or positioning? Um, Positioning. Scoring a volley, a header, or a screamer? Screamer. Being in the starting 11 in a mediocre game where you either lose or draw or coming from the bench to get the win? Starting. For my last question, I know you've answered this in one of our conversations previously, but being that I'm in Melbourne, how do you like your coffee? And do you have a favorite coffee shop or place that you can recommend I go to while I'm here? Uh, strong latte. I need that caffeine hit. Um, best one, I would say high ground in the city is pretty cool. High ground or top paddock. What's that? Higher ground, top paddock. Gotcha. And lastly, Angie, your message to the Filipino football community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so much love, so much uh, joy playing for you guys and, and having that support from you guys. Um, yeah, keep following us. Um, I'm so, so grateful to have your guys' support and for the team as well. Thank you so much. I, I, can't, I can't say it enough. Thank you, Angie. I appreciate it. Thanks for the chat. Okay. It was nice. I'll see you around. See ya. Bye. Bye.